with a brand new book subscription box for you. This is the first box um, for Fay Crate, um, which I am beginning to think of them kind of as like the US version maybe of Fairy Loot. Um, as you can see, this is quite a large box um, compared to some of the other book subscription boxes. Um, so they're Faye themed, thus Faye Crate, and I do recall that they have boxes like a Sealy box, Unsealy box, and a Solitary Faye box. Unfortunately, I don't remember what, which is the difference between Sealy and Unsealy. I know one of them is all the items in a t-shirt, the other is all the items in minus a t-shirt, and then Solitary Faye is just a t-shirt, I think. Um, they also have subscription plans, and they... Um, also can have single purchase so if you don't like to subscribe to things you can get single purchase if you like to buy based on theme um, and so this is the March box and it shipped on time today is March 21st and it is their debut box they did do a, a special t-shirt run in February um, but other than that this is the first official box so let's dive right in all I did was cut open the tape I haven't even looked inside yet so hopefully, oh, put some muscle into it. So this is not a tough box, which is what um, the book sub boxes usually come in. Um, this is just, the, I know they from following them on social media that they wanted to go with a bigger box. So let's see. So Fake Crate, um, March Crate is Bewitched, and this is the art that they used on their Instagram. Um, there's a little bit about um, the two ladies who have launched this box on the back. Um, it says, Brittany and Megan met over a year ago when Megan first entered the bookstagram world and was a rep for Brittany's shop, Verge of Wisteria, one of my reps for my candle shop. I do believe Kat um, was also a rep for this company as well. Um, they became close and they had both always wanted to start a book crate but didn't want to do it alone. Here, Fake Crate was born. They both had a love of the fantasy world and wanted to share it with the literary world. Thank you for being a part of our journey in the Fae community. Let's live a thousand lives together. So it's kind of set up like a little brochure. Um, it says like there's a TBR list and I'm happy to see that I was right about what book it was. Um, it announces the April theme and it actually gives, it doesn't just list the item, it actually gives a... Um, really nice description so I don't want to spoil it I want to pull out the items and read the description to you but then I'll show you this at the end so it looks like there's a lot going on here so they have some black crinkle paper um, the first thing I see I'm just gonna go with what I see first is a mug and it is a man in mug created by Virgin Wisteria and it says, we had to include our favorite moss witch. Manon is one BA warrior queen, and we all wish we had her as a friend. Enjoy your forgetful cake with Manon. So I'm actually, sorry, that's a horrible sound. <laughs> but then you know it's at least packaged good because it's tucked into this bubble wrap. Um, it has some residue from the black uh, crinkle paper they have in here, so it does need washed out. But it says, wrong kind of witch on it. Um, I've never read Sarah J. Moss. If you follow this, you know that I don't really, it doesn't really interest me very much, even though I know it's a popular fandom. Then I've had other people tell me that her writing's not all that great, but I also know that sex sells and she writes really sexy books, so I don't know. It's just not my, it's not my jam. Um, the next thing that grabs my attention looks like some tea and... Yes, Angela the Herbalist, Craft Your Own Brew from Albion Tea Company, which I have heard of that tea company. Um, craft your own color changing tea with a mix of pea flowers from Thailand, lemongrass, and hibiscus. The more you mix, the more the color ranges from blue to purple to pink. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, that's fun. So this is how this came packaged. It is the label, and then on the back you can see the tea inside. I'm not a huge tea drinker. I mean, I do drink tea on occasion and I think it's fun. Um, coffee is my, my go-to, but tea has its place as well. Let's see. Um, another thing I see is Alma's Forgetful Cakes and it says 
Bakery exclusive. These cakes are sold to help you forget a memory revolved around pain or heartbreak. Use wisely and just add water. Um, I will not be consuming this because I'm gluten free and it has wheat in it. Um, it has wheat starch and traditional flour in it, but it's a really cute idea. So cake mix. Um, what else? There is a candle, and this candle was created by Spidey Sense for the Truth Witch series. Um, it's a series close to our hearts and hopefully yours as well. The story of Ryber and Colin was recently released, and this candle is to soothe your heart as you read about this sweet couple. Uh, I do have the first and second book of that series and do want to read it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, this is not my first... Um, where was I reading that from? Oh, this is not my first Spiny Sense candle. I have ordered um, some candles from them in the past. And it smells like forest. So let's see. It's lavender, bergamot, oak moss, cool mountain stream, and ancient magic. And I would say it smells like that. It just kind of smells like foresty and watery. So that's the candle. Um, it says Sight Witch, which is the newest release in that series um, and it's a pretty like minty green color as well okay let's see what else you interested in this baby you interested in this does it smell good okay I know that I can feel more around okay um this is this is so cute um, from Cool Yeti Creations, oh look, another glorious morning makes me sick. Take these beloved Hocus Pocus switches with you as you read about another group of witch sisters. I love Hocus Pocus. I'm going to take this out, but look how nice and protected it is um, in these little Ziploc baggies. And Sanderson Sisters, magnetic, super cute. Love that. Okay, um, what else do we have here? This I'm really excited about actually. Actually, there's a couple things in here I'm very excited about. I'm trying to feel so I don't miss something. Um, this is a tea strainer. It says Swan Sisters Tea Strainer. The Swan Sister Witches of the book, which I'm not going to reveal yet, inspired us to include a dark swan of our own to steep your magical Aragon tea. Ooh, just dropped it. Okay. So that's that's really cute and fun. I'm always like challenged, <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, by the tea strainers because I can never figure out like how to open them and stuff. Oh, so that one just pops open, but that's good to know. <laughs> and it looks cute in the cup because it matches. Okay, uh, this is the item that I'm really curious about. I have another item in here. Okay. Is this? Oh! Boy, am I not really up on it. So I didn't even realize that the artwork they used is actually supposed to be Bellatrix for some reason, but I kind of like the interpretation. So this is by Chio Inc. Oh, he knows how to play little baby, bitty baby Potter. This gorgeous print was created by Chio Inc. who's on Tumblr to portray our favorite crazy villain. You can't have a witchy box without Lestrange, which is so true. Um, that's really fun. I didn't even notice that that was what the artwork represented so that's kind of cool okay um this is what I'm excited about here uh this is a marvelous land of Oz map if you could travel to any childhood fantasy land where would it be we would love to have met Glenda or the Wizard of Oz here's a map to lead you to all the right places so oh and it's color so that's cute I'm gonna have to put it under something to maybe make it lay flat, or I might just roll it up and keep it. I've taken to having a box of um, a box of stuff that is like um, artwork and prints and things that come in book boxes and other items. Um, I just have like a big fake suitcase kind of thing that I put them in because there's just so much that I was feeling claustrophobic having it all displayed all the time. Okay, so I'm super excited to say that the book is The Wicked Deep by Shea, sorry if I'm pronouncing the name wrong, Earnshaw. It came with a signed book plate as well. This is just like a little card. It says actually Dear Reader on the back, so I'll read that. <clears throat> so it says, 
Dear reader, you will find one of my favorite quotes at the beginning of The Wicked Deep. It reads, If there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water. I spent much of my childhood along the Oregon coast searching for shells that washed ashore on the beaches, breathing in the dark, foggy air that rose inland from the sea. And this quote could often be found above the doorways of coffee shops and wind-weathered bookstores. It became a quote I knew by heart and a quote I truly believed. If magic was to be found anywhere, I suspect it lingers in water. When writing The Wicked Deep, I wanted to explore the idea of magic and water and also the history of these tattered coastal towns. The streets and buildings themselves seem to conceal fragments of magic, a past that lived within the walls. So I began writing about the Swan Sisters, who they were, and how they ended up in a small town off the coast of Oregon in 1822. I knew these three sisters would be misunderstood. They would be villainized and blamed for all manner of bad things that occurred in the town of Sparrow. People would believe them to be witches, enchantresses who couldn't be trusted, and this belief would ultimately result in their death. Stones would be tied to their ankles and they would drown in the deep waters off the coast, but this was only the beginning. The start of what would become a two centuries long curse on the small remote town. I've always been fascinated by the real life stories of supposed witches, particularly during the Salem witch trials. Me as well. History has recounted this time with startling detail. There are countless records of the women who were convicted of the women who were convicted of witchcraft and the evidence used to find them guilty. Often a simple birthmark or a neighbor claiming to have seen the accused concocting a spell was enough to convict her of witchery and send a woman to her death. In writing The Wicked Deep, I wanted to create a small town where rumors and lies can spread quickly among the locals, where past misdeeds still haunt the town today, because something as horrific as the murder of three sisters cannot so easily be wiped away from the town's history. I wanted to explore how a single act can shape the foundation of a town and alter the way of life for generations after. Belief in something can become like a stain on a town, writing it from the inside out. Wishing you calm seas and strong cups of tea from my witchy heart to yours and happy reading. That reminds me of, um, and they don't have it actually listed, but I think it would also be a good, uh, if you like this book of the month, you'll love these. The Disappearances had kind of like the same small town thing with a curse and with, um, you know, the generations that follow that curse so that's a really good book too is uh, the disappearances and I have a review for that on this channel so that was the letter to the reader um, it says if you enjoy this book you would like truth witch uh, by Susan Dennard the Raven boys which is one of my favorite series love Maggie Stiefvater Firewalker by Josephine Angelini which I feel like I might have that but I'm not really sure and born wicked by Jessica Spotswood and um, this also comes with a free ebook download um, for something called Scythe of Darkness, or Skith. I actually don't know how to say that word. Um, I think it's Skith. I always say it wrong. Um, of Darkness, written by Dawn Husted. Be bold, irresistible, and beautifully written Skith of Darkness is a riveting Grim Reaper novel that hooks readers until the very end. So, let's see. Here is The Wicked Deep. Which is, oh, it's, I actually can't wait to read this because, let me put my stuff aside because I'm excited. Um, first of all, the cover is gorgeous and it kind of has, check that out. The camera is actually picking up how like the silver is kind of opalescent. Um, it doesn't look very long and I think it's a standalone, which I'm not completely sure, but I thought I read that and that makes me even more excited. So... Um, the Swan Sisters arrived in Sparrow, Oregon in 1822. Marguerite, the oldest, had long auburn locks, full lips, and a sharp jaw. Aurora, the middle sister, boasted soft waves of hair and bright, full moon eyes. And Hazel, the youngest, was the plainest of the three, with smaller features and hair that twisted into a tumbling braid. Each was beautiful, and each was misunderstood. A year later, the townspeople executed the Swan Sisters for crimes of witchcraft, placing a curse on the small town of Sparrow, a curse that has never been broken until now, perhaps. I think this... This is awesome. All right, welcome to the cursed town of Sparrow. Two centuries ago, three sisters were sentenced to death for witchery. Stones were tied to their ankles and they were drowned in the deep water surrounding the town. Now, for a brief time each summer, the sisters return, stealing the bodies of three troubled girls so that they may seek their revenge, luring boys into Sparrow's harbor and pulling them under. Like many locals, 17-year-old Penny Talbot has accepted the fate of the town. But this year, on the eve of the sisters' return, a boy named Bo Carter arrives, unaware of the danger he has just stumbled into. Mistrust and lies spread quickly through the salty, rain-soaked streets. The townspeople will turn against one another. Penny and Bo will suspect the other of hiding secrets, and death will come swiftly to those who cannot resist the call of the sisters. But only Penny sees what others cannot, and she will be forced to choose, save Bo or save herself. Sounds so good. Um, Shea Earnshaw, 
lives in it's either Shea or Shea. I'm not sure because it's spelled like Shea butter, but lives and writes in a small mountain town in Oregon where she hears her home shares her home with her husband, a tiny dog named Diesel, and two furry felines. She's happiest when lost in a good book, lost in the woods, or writing her next novel. And it gives you her website if you'd like to connect with her. Uh, let's take a peek at the Naked Awesome. So cool. Look at that. Seriously, I don't know if any print-on-demand people ever watch these, but print-on-demand for indie authors are totally missing out by not being able to have features like this. Like CreateSpace and Instagram, or Instagram, Ingram Spark, are you listening that we want to be able to make cool hardback books with embossed features and cool designs on them? So take note. But that is super... I can't get over the cover. It's amazing. Um, I'm very, very excited to read this book. So I did say that I was going to show you what this little brochure looked like because I had not want to spoil it. So the April theme is Battle Cry. Um, not sure if they have books, any boxes left. They may. I also know that they had a special uh, book for the next, or box for the next Sarah J Moss book coming out. Um, not sure if that sold out. It was like a limited edition box. So this is what the brochure look like with a synopsis which I think is kind of nice compared to I mean a, a spoiler card is nice just because of the size but you can only fit so much on those I kind of like having the a little bit of a longer description um, for these love the book recommendation and awesome that there's also another free book download um, so wow here is my first reaction is that this is a great debut box and in my experience, um, boxes tend to get better, not always, but usually the boxes tend to grow and develop as the um, curators and creator learn more about you know what their customers want and what items work and what items didn't. And I think this is an excellent debut box. Uh, based on theme, I did not order the April box, but I know that at some point in time, I will most likely be ordering another fake crate if I can figure out the book and if it's a book that I want. I knew I really wanted this book and I also knew that I really wanted to order this box. Obviously I didn't order the box with the t-shirt. It's a little bit more expensive and so I think I was kind of like, you know, at the time trying to be not frugal because obviously I'm buying book boxes but I didn't want to spend too much money. Um, so I opted not to get the t-shirt because I'm always torn with t-shirts. It's like Okay, it either becomes like a workout t-shirt because I can't wear things with like logos and stuff on it like to work, like it can only be something small and you know, or it's going to like sit in my closet and hang there and not get a lot of wear. So I'm always kind of like in between when I get a t-shirt and a box. So in the future, maybe I'll get their box with a t-shirt, uh, with the t-shirt if it's a theme that I'm really excited about. So this is the debut box for Bay Crate and this was the March um, 2018 was it Bewitched I wanted to say Wicked Deep because I'm so excited to read that book uh, the theme was Bewitched in this giant box check that out so great box I suggest that you check them out I think there are going to be great things coming from Bay Crate in the future in the meanwhile happy reading and happy writing